In the same vein, the European Union has welcomed the appointment of Ngozi Okonjo Iwala as Director General of the World Trade Organization. The former Minister of Finance in Nigeria made history by becoming the first woman in Africa to hold the position. Expressing delight at the news of Okonjo Iwala's appointment, the President of the EU, Osla von der Leyen, revealed that Europe is fully behind her. We're now being joined by an, an economist, Wolahon Olojide, to analyze this confirmation and what it entails. Good evening to you, uh, Mr. Olojide. Many thanks for joining us on PLUS News Now. Yeah, good evening. Nice to be here. All right. Uh, thank you uh, for staying tuned. Uh, let's localize her confirmation for a bit. What does this portend for Nigeria and indeed the African economy? Well, the role is um, it's not exactly a Nigerian role or an African role. Uh, it, it is global. Uh, but I believe that as uh, an African, um, the first female, an African to occupy that post, uh, maybe at the end of his uh, about tenure, we'll have a situation in which Africa we're currently doing about 2%, uh, between 2 and 3% of the entire global trade. Uh, will have stepped up uh, the, the ante and be able to do to do better than we're currently doing. Um, in, in, in terms of um, being able to sit across the table and have proper negotiations, and also to be able to go back home and see how we can bring to the table more value-add uh, 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 products that we can offer to the world and, and be at, 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 at power, at an advantage. Uh, when it comes to this uh, trade matters. All right, thank you. Uh, well, let's uh, look at some of the tasks ahead. Uh, what do you think Dr. Okonjo Iwala should be doing vis-a-vis uh, -vis brokering international trade talks in the face of persistent U.S.-China conflict? Well, there's a whole, a whole lot of uh, dispute issues that she will need to deal with. You just mentioned one of it the America-China issue. There are also America-Europe. Um, and you also have the developing world versus the developed world. There is a whole lot of uh, mistrust between those parties. So as far as trade dispute, trade negotiation is concerned, uh, in the midst of mistrust, she has a role cut out for her. Um, there's also the part about uh, the digital economy. Um, when, when the WTO itself was put together, the digital businesses that we have today did not exist. Uh, but there, there's a whole lot of them in that space right now. Uh, so we have to be able to, she has to lead some sort of reform okay. in that institution to accommodate the digital space, which either two has not been uh, uh, a, a big part of the deal. Um, Beyond that, this is also happening in the midst of a pandemic. So there are rules that pertains to uh, the vaccine equity, you know, dissuading vaccine nationalism, and being able to get participation and, and involvement of developing world uh, in, in, in what is going on in the vaccine space. So every nation, irrespective of whether you are poor or you are rich, can have access to the vaccine. All right, uh, let's uh, stay on that for a bit now. You said, uh, okay, why? Well, the substantive DG says her first priority would be to quickly address the economic and health consequences of COVID-19 pandemic and to implement the policy responses to get the global economy going again. Should, be, should this be the first thing she needs to do? Well, she's relocated right in the middle of a pandemic. So obviously that is top priority. For her. Incidentally, she has been involved with vaccine at Gavi. Uh, so she's on a familiar terrain and, and she knows exactly what and what to do. She knows exactly how this plays out with Gavi um, for, for several years. So her, her work is cut out for her and she knows exactly how to, how, how to shoot for that. At the same time, the world needs to move out of recession into a prosperity pathway. Again, and one of the important things that will help that to happen is trade. 
So we must begin to trade again with ourselves across the world. Of course, we are aware of all the lockdowns and shutdowns and shorting that has happened over this COVID season. So for us to recover all sort of impediments across the world to trade, she must begin to address them to help us get out of a, a, a recession. All right, of course, uh, it is uh, not, it won't be surprising to say that uh, the particular confirmation will not come with uh, the regular pressure. So just what would you advise? How should she respond to pressure to reform uh, trade rules? Um, the pressure she will face will be tremendous. I mean, because of the challenging times and, and the problem that the institution has faced over the time. At the same time, she will face pressure for being an African and for being a female. So there's a whole lot of expectation. Okay, you guys wanted female the DG, you now have a female DG. You wanted an African DG, you now have an African DG. Let's see what she can do. So those are pressure points for her. But at the same time, she has shown tremendous capacity in, in various other roles that she has played in the past. And I have no doubt, just like many people have no doubt, she has the backing of 163 other nations, member nations, for, for, for this particular role. And, and I have no, absolutely no doubt that she will live up to uh, uh, the, a chunk of this expectation. All right, many thanks, and well at home. Thanks for having me. Right, that was Balanho Olojede, an economist, sharing his thought and setting an agenda for Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwala. She was confirmed as the DG of the World Trade Organization. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.